What video game will always be nostalgic for you? Command Conquer, Diablo II, Red Alert, that opening video, time will tell. Sooner or later, time will tell. The OG Hell March was always the best one. One of the first riffs I learned when I got an electric guitar. Stay a while and listen is seared into my brain. Diablo 2 was the game of the millennium. I went out and got a new PC just so I could play the CNC remaster. Absolutely worth it. Construction complete. Super Mario World. First game I ever 100% D. The start of my love affair with gaming. A timeless masterpiece. Same. The amount of hours me and my friend Troy put into that game drove my parents crazy. Troy moved away after 5th grade. I sometimes wonder if Troy truly existed or was just created in my mind to help me save Princess Peach. Well, real or not, shout out to Troy. Half-Life. Such an awesome gauntlet just battling for your life non-stop for two days while trying to escape this massive facility. All while being dogged by that mysterious G-Man. Man that game would make you think. Like just stop and think. What is the best way to approach this? With the ammo I have, the health I have left, and the certain types of enemies over there. Should I try and go round the side there? Is it worth wasting an entire crossbow bolt on them? So good. The first time I tangled with marines, it creeped me out because their army was so good. They'd communicate with each other, coordinate their attacks, launch pincer movements, advance and fall back together. It was the first time a game made me feel like I was being hunted down by a ruthless, intelligent enemy. SimCity 2000. Reticulating splines. Mario Kart. Spiro. Dude. Still holds up. Remastered trilogy was great. But I still go back and replay the originals every year or so. Someone mentioned it further up, but Spiro deserves more credit. The soundtrack made by Stuart Copeland is nothing short of brilliant, and it always gives me a warm fuzzy feeling. Mortal Kombat and all the controversy behind it. They tried to ban it for being inappropriate and too bloody. Look how well that worked out. It's the reason we have a ratings board for video games. Not that people pay attention to them but they're there. TBF that was the point kind of, internal regulation that they could intentionally minimize so that they weren't actually hindered by it rather than government regulation that was backed by an actual legal precedent, just like the MPAA, that way no one really gives a shit games still get to be made however they want, except for Nintendo and that one gum stop employee that carded me when I bought GTA even though I was 20. Tony Hawk Pro Skater the original, THPS2 for me. I know the maps by heart, I completed the game 100% and any song popping up instantly returns me back to being 12-13 and trying out skateboarding for the first time, you got me running in a sicy loan. Roller Coaster Tycoon, I want to get off him ah, Bones Wild Ride, the ride never ends, guest 1038 is lost and cannot find the park exit, well, time to pick him up and teach him how to swim. Looping Coaster 3 looks too intense for me. Just looking at Looping Coaster 3 makes me feel sick. RCT Classic is honestly such a good mobile port. Cannot recommend it enough. Ocarina of Time. No other game has made me feel the way it did Christmas morning 1998. So it was Christmas break and a bunch of my friends got out. But I didn't talk to all of them over break. We got back to school and I'm talking to Jeff about the game and he tells me he already beat it. I couldn't believe it. I asked him how he figured out the water temple so quickly and he said what water temple? Turns out he only collected the first three stones and thought that was it. I'll never forget the look of pain on his face when I explained that was all basically just the intro. A prologue to start the real journey haha. <laughs> Love that game. The main menu music. Just thinking about it gives me chills. I was listening the other day and heard a piano cover of the fairy fountain while I was at a coffee shop and I literally froze and everything stopped. My head was full of nostalgia and I couldn't exactly place why because I didn't recognize it at first. My girlfriend thought something was wrong with me because I got up and walked over closer to the speaker and realized it was the great fairy fountain of Oot. I was absolutely blow away, watching my older brother play that until I could hold a controller then head out and Majora's Mask, being so scared of the time temple because it turned everyone into zombies, 
I remember I snuck out of bed to go downstairs and play Zelda in the middle of the night but got caught when I accidentally summoned a large spinny seed boy, idk what the actual name is but they're in the grass around the large Hyrule center fields near water temple place, and I literally screamed, parents came rushing out, and I was done for, very funny, solving those puzzles was the biggest rush as a kid, I would be so proud of myself, lol. That was Pokemon Blue on a purple GBC for me, absolute yes. On a road trip with a pack of batteries and a worm light for post bedtime rips. Crash Bandicoot. Sony Computer Entertainment America presents, an Universal Interactive Studios production, a game. Created in development by Naughty Dog, Crash Bandicoot, warped, press start to begin theme song. This got me really excited. I had the same kind of Pavlovian response to this as a dog has when it hears a food wrapper crunch. Ooga booga. I said the same thing he, me and my younger brother played Wrath of Cortex until the game stopped working. We were so upset when we realized we couldn't play anymore. That blue disc will always bring good memories. Star Wars Battlefront 2 Classic. 2005. We've lost a command post. Enemy forces have captured a command post. We've cut off the separatist reinforcements. Victory is imminent, and my favorite, it's Django, and he brought his head with him. Man, that takes me back. Watch those wrist rockets. Playing some good Galactic Conquest was the sh- I remember playing that mode for hours, or playing as an adat on Hoth. Ah, this game is gold. I still play it. My favorite game on the PS2. Doom. Tetris. I played the F out of that with the Game Boy. That gameplay with that soundtrack was hypnotizing. Donkey Kong Country, the mineshaft levels, man. Probably spent an entire summer getting past those, James Bond Golden Eye on N64, Spiro, Year of the Dragon. I didn't even have a memory card when I played that, I would just leave the game on overnight and try to beat it in 2 or 3 days. Nostalgia? Loads of things get me going down memory lane nowadays. But, oh boy, the underwater level for Donkey Kong, aquatic ambience. I still occasionally play a 7 hour loop on YouTube while I go to sleep. Morrowind. Outlander. What do you want? Enwana. Sonic 1. I had so much fun playing that as a kid but goddamn I sucked at it. Could never get past Act 2. SCGAAA. Metal Gear Solid. From 1 to 3. Pokemon Gen 1. Pokemon Gen 1 had two things going for it that I think Pokemon will never, ever be able to recapture simply due to the march of time, which I think makes them worth especially highlighting in this thread. 1. Those games were broken as f. There were so many glitches that all of us 10 year olds who only had Pokemon Red as their only Game Boy game inevitably ran into some weird sh happening, whether it was accidentally clipping through a wall. To encounter English Pokemon those bugs created an atmosphere where ifying anything was at least feasible. 2. The internet was still in its infancy, so most kids got their information about the game from their friends. This created wild rumor mills that actually, occasionally turned out to be true. Huh, you really can get practically infinite items by surfing on the beach at Cinnabur. Wow, there really is a truck over to the left side of the SS. And doc maybe there is a way to coax Mew out from under it. These two things were compounded by the already encyclopedic level of knowledge available about the game. I mean, when you learned that certain Pokemon could learn certain moves at lower levels by not evolving. Or that certain Pokemon could only evolve in certain ways. And that there are dozens of type interactions between both moves and Pokemon. You started to wonder what other quirks and intricacies were lying in wait. More than that, there always seemed to be a new rumor or crazy thing a friend showed you that made you question everything all over again. Just how in the F did Jake from 6 houses down the block get a level 255 Kingler? It all added up to a Pokemon world that felt magical, full of ridiculous, limitless possibilities, where every scrap of knowledge had to be play tested before being added or discarded from your own personal mastery of these crazy little monsters. Nowadays, with every detail being available online, it's hard to experience that wonder when the temptation of quick answers is just a few finger taps away, a temptation exacerbated by the fact that there are now so many different sets of information for each generation of Pokemon that you really need access to that information just to keep all the changes straight. Sure, glitches and tricks are still there, but they are fewer and farther between. 
and without the word of mouth experience. They feel less like personal discoveries of the Pokemon universe. People can make fun of me all they want for being a Gen 1 or whatever, but there really was a lot more to the phenomenon of that era of Pokemon than just a couple of really good games backed by an insanely effective marketing strategy and successful cartoon. That second point was so astonishing if you think about it, no internet and you found and shared glitches amongst friends. But when I now read about it, anyone from any country also found shared the same findings too. The music, the towns, the animations, each of the sprites. I played that game every single day till Gen 2 came out. Pokemon was a significant part of my childhood. It saved me. I will always love Gen 1 and be nostalgic for it. The Sims 2. I've been a fan of the Sims franchise since I was very little and it was the first video game I ever played, at least that I remember, and I remember being very little and getting on my sister's laptop and either deleting her family, killing her Sims family, or treating the children so poorly that they got taken away or died. Good times. Worms. Twisted Metal. Heroes of Might Magic 3. GoldenEye 64. Those multiplayer slumber parties in 1998 were the best. Our faves were Proximity Minds in the library. Our friend Brandon. Think Eric Cartman. Only so fat he fell through the floor of his mobile home. Hated Proxy Minds because they required no skill and he grinded that game. Beat that game on all settings. He could expert kill you with remote minds and timer minds. Didn't think it was fair that we, lesser skilled players, could use proxy mines to kill, refused any game that was set to proxy mine. One game we were beating him, we got smart and decided that instead of battle royal, we needed to team up against him. He unplugged our controllers. This lead to another form of the game. Tosk Hunt. Tosk Hunt. From the Deep Space Nine episode Captive Pursuit one player is Tosk, others chase after Tosk. Winner is who kills Tosk the most time. Tosk wins if he has the most kills. When Brandon was Tosk we set to proxy mines because f you Tosk. Brandon was the only Tosk to win. That sounds awesome. We had a 3 volt 1 game called the Baron PD. One player is Baron Samadhi with plus 10 health set. The other 3 players have minus 10 health set. The Baron can only use slap. The other players can use any means possible to stop the Baron. Even with remote mines it's difficult to not get slapped up. Baldur's Gate. Ratchet and Clank or Bioshock. Every time I boot up Bioshock I'm amazed at how well it holds up. Also I think Ratchet and Clank was almost exclusively what I used my PS2 for. I still haven't found a coop campaign experience as good as Deadlocked. Maybe Halo 2. Halo Combat Evolved. I was like 5 years old and absolutely obsessed with trucks and army men and here's my uncle and grandfather playing some game with aliens and guns but most importantly, the Warthog. It was the coolest looking thing ever and I begged them to let me play and they finally did. I think I spent 3-4 hours just driving around the second campaign mission. FFWD 20 years and every time I boot up the game. The soundtrack and voice acting and everything just takes me right back to 2001 and sometimes I tear up a little. Chrono Trigger. GTA. San Andreas. Grove Street. Home. At least it used to be before I fed everything up. You picked the wrong house fool. Vice City for me. Portal. Need for Speed Underground 2. Command Conquer. Red Alert. We I Bowling We I Sports. Used to play it with my brother all the time. How have I not seen Age of Empires yet? AOEII in particular. First network game I ever played. Epic battles with my pals. Unbelievably there's still quite a big AOEII scene with pro players and all. And for a game that is nearly as old as me, Wololo, Wololo, Age of Mythology was the one I was looking for. Crazy Taxi. Super Mario World. Frogger. Jack and Axter. I've been replaying the Precursor Legacy recently. It still holds up. I'm amazed how well they pulled off the genre switch between Precursor Legacy and Jack II. It went from a 3D platformer akin to Mario for the PS2 to this gritty cyberpunk style GTA. 10 stroke 10 game for 11 yo me. Even if I did have to get a friend to beat on in's game. Yes, Oblivion. I logged so much time on that between my cousin's PS3 then eventually on my 360. Even today since it's been backwards compatible on my X1. I've lost count how many times I've played through. 
Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. The Oregon Trail. It was the first video game I ever played back on the computer we had in my grade school's classroom. I remember rushing to finish quizzes and tests just to be the first to get my fix of the game since the teacher let us play if we finished early. I still sometimes play it on Archive.org, along with the 1992 Deluxe Edition for nostalgia. Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. Honestly I think this is the best Zelda game. I replayed it last year for the first time in probably 15 years and was amazed at how well it still holds up. No nostalgia glasses needed. Ocarina of Time for me. That title screen with Link riding through Hyrule always hits me. GTA Vice City. Need for Speed. Most Wanted. 2005. Tekken 6. Road Rash. 2009. Vice City was such a great experience. Getting a helicopter and being able to fly around what felt like a gigantic map was ming blowing. The plane was also a great experience. The good old Most Wanted from 2005. The best NFS so far and will likely stay it forever. Just hearing the music lets the vibes roam free. I am rock. Gallagher and Pac-Man. Super Mario Bros 3. This is absolutely the one for me. I was 6-7 years old when my family fled from war in Yugoslavia. And we stayed with relatives in Vienna. The kid had an S with SMB3. It was pure magic. We struggled so long to clear the first jump, but soon we got into the groove. When we settled down in Sweden, my parents saved up money and bought me an S with SMB3 for my birthday, and I literally couldn't believe it. I thought they had borrowed it from someone to let me play over the weekend. I didn't have many games, so I beat SMB3 over and over again. I'm now in my mid-30s, and no birthday gift will ever beat that. And SMB3 is the game that made me a lifetime gamer. Pokemon Emerald and Fire Red for the Game Boy Advance. Starcraft. Banjo Kazooie. Super Mario Bros. Bubble Barble. No one ever knows what I'm talking about, but that music gets stuck in your head for decades. Baldur's Gate 2. Pokemon Red. The opening song never fails to make me cry with nostalgia. It brings me back to when I started my long journey as a Pokemon trainer. In that Christmas Eve so many years ago. Welcome to the world of Pokemon indeed. RuneScape 2008 to 2013. I remember having to send a money order in the mail and waiting two weeks for a three month membership. That game helped me escape life in 2009 when my best friend died. 2012 ended up being the year I got banned for botting. Lost a lot of hard earned because I was too occupied with needing to play while working and adjusting to a social life. Now I'm back at it again with OSRS. It's not the same but at the same time it is. Got my fee and K to even play it. Just collect stuff and skills. It's adorable to see the flame in her eyes for the game I once held dear. I wish I had that spark still. Final Fantasy 7 and 8. Pokemon Sapphire 4 Game Boy SP. Crash Team Racing. Lego Star Wars. The first two. The anthology pack that combines both trilogies is better. It makes the pod race and Death Star escape levels playable. The space flying levels have also been lowered in difficulty to something below suicidally difficult. Super Metroid. Sat up all night to complete it. Need for Speed. Underground 2. Most Wanted. 2005. Carbon. Crash Bandicoot 3. Warped. Doom. Doom 2. Doom 3 and Final Doom on PC. Man. Listening to music. Reading fanfic and killing monsters was my life from 95-2005. Heroes of Might Magic 3. The game that perfected a formula with near infinite replay value. 8 distinct factions. And a half asset 9th in the expansion. And that soundtrack oh god that soundtrack. Mega Man. Super Mario 64. I could play that game over and over. Nothing but good feels. The Monkey Island series. Heck. All of those old Sierra games. Red Alert 2. So over the top and silly with less base micromanagement than StarCraft. Though I did play the crap out of that too. Half-Life 2. The first real modern FPS I played. Coming from UT98. The graphics made my jaw drop. Something about the atmosphere and movement and combat really clicked too. I played a lot of Hectoliters 2DM back in the day. My two top picks. 
though with special mention to Neverhood the silly soundtrack never gets old. Diablo 2. Click 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 click. Oh you want to build that sends a wave of 50 bone teeth every time you attack? No problem. And Yun 2000, which was really just another CNC but with send worms. Very much a PC biased list because my parents refused to buy me a console. But PC gaming was all fair. Super Smash Bros on N64. The original Mafia, the music and atmosphere is unlike any other game, including the remake. Team Fortress 2 I will never forget that game and its reddish humorous humorous and amazing characters. Sonic Adventure 2. 